The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Aid for it every single week. Lady Ada uses her power of engineering and more to show you how to find things on DigiKey. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the week this week? Okay. This week, uh, so I was doing some analog MEMS mics projects, and uh, I wanted to make a breakout for uh, an amplified MEMS microphone. I like MEMS mics because, of course, there's no hand soldering. You can pick and place them. Um, they're very small compared to electric mics, and, um, you know, you don't need to bias them. The circuitry is, is sometimes a little simpler because they just kind of give you analog output. We also have done a lot of PDM mics and I2S MEMS mics. Um, those are really nice because, you know, you, you get a little microphone and gives you digital output. But there are some times when you really want an analog output, like a true analog waveform. Um, and in that case, yeah, you need to go with, with the MEMS design. Nothing's going to be as, as uh, for pick and placing, um, nothing's going to be as simple as just, uh, you know, a, a simple tin can style MEMS microphone with a little amplifier. Um, and there's no hand soldering, which I'm trying to avoid in this design. Um, so we do have a, a breakout that is unamplified for the SPW2430. At the time when this came out, a couple years ago, uh, do you want to go to the computer? Yeah. Uh, when this came out, um, you know, this is a, a nice little MEMS mic. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite simple. You give it power, there's a three volt regulator, and then you get AC coupled or DC coupled output. The only problem is, yeah, this is only 100 volts you know, peak to peak. So I want to re redo this design. I've kind of meant to redo this in a while and, and I'm finally getting to it. Um, but the bad news is that when I went to uh, order these uh, to just check in on them to make sure that they were available, they are in stock, uh, but they're NRND, so not recommended for new designs, which, yeah, there are 97,000 stocks. So it's not like I can't use this. Um, and I think, uh, you know, this is something that I'll be able to purchase for a bit, but, um, you know, it, I don't want to design it. If I'm going to design a new design, you know, I'm going to see if there's anything else available. Uh, so don't get stuck in two or three years having to do a respin. I might as well, you know, like a MEMS mic is a MEMS mic. I don't feel like there's any one that's particularly better than the other. Um, so let's find an alternative to this that is available. Um, so I definitely want it to be a MEMS analog mic. Remember, there's there's three types of microphones you can get in MEMS. You can get I2S, PW, PDM, and analog. And I2S and PDM are more expensive in specialty. Um, analog is is usually very inexpensive. You see, these are you know 50 cents or so. Um, I don't actually care too much about you know the shape or anything. There's different sizes and packages, but they're all going to be about the same. I don't really care about the Signal noise ratios is something very simple. Um, normally, I would pick omnidirectional, but there are it just it, that's not a, a specific thing, and also the frequency range can change. So, I think I'm just going to look for any MEMS analog mics, and then I'm going to look for only the active ones for this for this new design. Um, so let's see. There's a couple options. Looks like, uh, you know, there's some that are in stock, some that are not in stock. Uh, a lot of that are bottom ported. Um, I think I want a top port design. A top port design looks like this where there's a hole at the top. Uh, bottom port looks like this where the, you have to have a hole in the PCB and audio goes at the bottom. That's, that's good when you want something flush, but in this case, I don't, I don't think I really need that. I kind of like this top. I kind of like a top ported design. Um, so let's select for port location, top, let's go to the top. And then let's also go with the normally stocking. And um, so it looks like there's a lot of options here, which is really nice. Again, these are kind of generic. There's, you know, this is sort of looks like a weatherproof version. There's this kind, there's this kind. Um, looking at you know, the ranges, it looks like, you know, I can do 20 to 20 kilohertz. That's kind of cool. And uh, they're all going to be 3 volts. Um, but, you know, you're going to pay more for, for fancier. So let's let's sort by price and see what we get. So there's a couple. Oh, I think this is maybe a... Let's not look at marketplace. Okay. okay. Uh, avoiding the marketplace looks like CUI devices has this one. And then uh, there's also this one. This one looks kind of good to me because it's both inexpensive and um, there's 370,000 in stock, which is always a nice look. Everything else, there's about 2,000 in stock. 
Um, I like it when there's a lot available. This looks like a pretty standard one. And then what's also nice is it looks like the pad out on the bottom is actually kind of similar to the pad out here. Like it's got the four pads, um, which is pretty cool. So I can, you know, use this and I'll check the, the dimensions, but hopefully it'll, it'll be about the same. So let's, uh, let's open this up. Oops. And then comparing it to this component. So this one is uh, 3 by 0.1 by 2.5 millimeters. This one is 3.7 by 3 millimeters. So it's a little bit wider and a little bit taller, but I think I could probably have the pads fit either, which would be kind of nice. So I could start with maybe the parts I have in stock now and then adapt up to um, this other, the SPU part. And then um, another thing that was kind of neat is there are um, different, if you don't do the top port requirement, um, so let me get rid of the port location. I still want to exclude marketplace. Um, there are a couple cool ones. Like I saw this one, there's a 80 kilohertz microphone. It's bottom ported, but this is kind of cool because it can do, um, you know, ultrasonic, a high frequency noise. So it could be good for, um, you know, recording, you know, you could record high frequency noises that normally microphones are filtered out. They're usually kind of a window filtered from 20 to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, but if you want to make like a bat detector, um, this microphone is pretty cool. So <laughs> this is not what I'm going to use. I might make a different breakout for this, this bat detector, but I thought it was neat that um, there is there is a uh, MEMS mic that can go up to 80 kilohertz. So that's you know, bats are getting a better rep lately, so um, I mean, maybe we got to start detecting bats more. Yeah. It's like the new the new Batman. What else uh, can you use it besides to? I don't know. For I bats? think it, I think it said it was for like effects, like if you like it was for detecting sounds because you can and maybe uh, far field. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it was a little bit unclear exactly what it's for. It could be military use or. Um, you know, That's high high frequency signaling. You know, there was the um, the Wi-Fi chip from uh, Amazon that would use high frequency signaling to uh, to set yeah. the Wi-Fi access point. And because you can you can send very high frequencies, and this would be able to detect them. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff that you know, even for humans, we can't really hear very well. Uh, close to twenty kilohertz, you know, we can't. Especially as we age, we start un not being able to hear uh, over like ten or fifteen kilohertz. Um, this could be interesting. So this is not my the product I'm going to use, but I thought it was an interesting yeah. part. So it's kind of cool. I could see us. Uh, I mean, you know, we can't. We'll get in trouble on Twitter if we start like making stuff that uh, angers a person. So we just got to be careful with that. But that, yeah. I, I think there's some good ideas there. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's the great search. Okay. It's a great search.